Hi, this is Wishup, and this is your new moon reading for the Taurus new moon of April 26th on 20, uh, 2017. <laughs> anyway, um, I know you see a sort of playing card back here. The reason is what I did was I took the geomancy glyphs that I've been playing with a lot, which if you watch regularly, you know, um, and I'll also include a link to the geomancy playlist if you want to know more about how to do geomancy and understand it and read the symbols and that kind of thing. Um, but what I did was I mocked up some cards and I just used what I had handy and I just cut and glued these cards together. I will probably do a, um, a fancier and more uniform and uh, entirely different style version on the computer, but I wanted to do was create a little fun kind of working deck just based on stuff I had on hand. So that's what I did. And what that allows me to do is then to flip cards. So even though we call it geomancy and it would use shells or dice or all sorts of methods like that, because I've turned the geomantic glyphs into cards, I can do it as cardomancy too. Um, a typical shield spread which I consider to be sort of like a grand tableau. It's extremely detailed in what you can get out of it, in my view, would be 15 glyphs. So I've actually just made sort of a half deck for myself. So I'm just going to do four cards, four glyphs, to make a central line, which would consist of head, heart, belly, and feet. So let me sort of show you what I mean. It'll be easier to tell. So let me just move this little placeholder out of the way. So when I flipped the first card that I'm going to use for the head, what I got was my little card for Fortuna Major, Great Fortune. As you can see, I've got two glyphs on each card. They're the reverses of each other or the opposites of each other. So here's Fortuna Major on this card, and this became our head position. In glyphs, we read the top line is the head, the second line is the heart, the third line is the belly, and the fourth line is the feet. So there's sort of a, there's a tradition of breaking up uh, geomancy into these four components. So this is now the card for my head, Fortuna Major, Sun in Leo. Here's red because it's a fire sign. This is a little strip of paper that I used for the sun. This is also the sun. Uh, here's a number because I number up to 16. The name, it has a line under it because it's a stable force. Ones that do not have a line under them in this particular mock-up are uh, mobile forces. So I assigned the numbers 1 through 16 using a somewhat um, traditional approach from the Middle Ages, and then I kind of altered it uh, to my, something that would make sense to me, because I tend to correspond a, a little bit with tarot and with other systems, so I want to make sure that it makes sense to me. Um, the reason why I did this and made these little pictures and cards is because if you look at the traditional glyphs, these are some examples, they're just not very expressive. So it can be hard to remember, well, what do they mean? What are they telling me? So I decided if I left the glyphs in the corner of my card, so I always had them for reference, I'd like to turn this into a scepter because that tells me a lot personally about the meaning of the card. So for head, Fortuna Major, the scepter. For heart, actually, this one we pulled Fortuna Minor, which I think of as the magic wand. It's mobile because it's not underlined. It's an air because we've got this purplish gray in back. That's air. It's the sun in air, which is also Leo. Um, I think of it as the magic wand because it's temporary. Uh, it's transient. It's a mobile force and it tends to come from other people. So this is the scepter that we hold. And this is somebody pointing at us, bing, giving us that little uh, dose of luck. So great fortune and a little stroke of luck. The third card for belly is carcer. This is the card for prison. 
Um, it's also the card for Capricorn because here's my strip for Saturn, Saturn in Earth. Earth is green. So I've created this stone tomb to express the restrictive nature of Carcer, but also its tremendous strength and determination and ability to persist. So Carcer is what's in the belly. And what's in the feet is Acquisitio. Acquisitio is stable. It's fire, because here's the red. This is the little pattern I used for Jupiter. So Jupiter in fire is Sagittarius, which is very lucky. And this is numbered one, like the magician. These are overflowing bowls. I have them as golden bowls. And they are like the, uh, like the golden cauldron that keeps providing and providing and providing. It never runs empty. And it has uh, everything that you need in it. And uh, so it's Sagittarian. So this is my feet card. So I hope that you can see all these. Let me just arrange them a little bit. So if I look at a situation, the Taurus new moon, where I'm going from head to feet, let's talk through where we're at, like the head, what we think, what our ambitions are, our imagination, our perception of things, our sense of self, the heart, what we desire, uh, things that have to do with our relationships with other people, our belly. This can be um, a sense of courage, strength, what our fears are too. You know that the quivering in the pit of your stomach, the butterflies. So some of that sense of the deepest fears uh, can be in the belly, but also hungers that, that we have. Um, and this is the feet. Where are we going? What do we feel uh, compelled to do? What actions are we participating in or, or being called to? So if I look at the Taurus new moon, and this is just a snapshot, um, but if I look at these four cards for the Taurus new moon, the situation as I see it, reading these cards, are that we're in a position in terms of our perception of opportunities ahead of us that is guided by great experience. We have learned a lot. We have gained a lot. Um, we may even be in a, in a good position of some sort related to our personal sense of authority, our personal sense of power and self. And because of that, we have a great vision. We have a vision of something that we couldn't have had five years ago, let's say, because it required a level of expertise and experience and gained knowledge to have the perspective. So we have this great vision. Now, if you think about this in terms of the many areas of life, uh, it could be a new business, it could be a new personal plan for yourself. Um, really, if we're talking about the Taurus new moon, it could be something having to do with property. It could be uh, a home move that you'd like to make, a beautification program of any kind. So that could be yourself personally that you feel you want to um, beautify. Maybe it's your wardrobe or some other a facet of your physical appearance, but it could also be uh, beautifying your property, changing location. It could be improving your financial security, uh, all of these kinds of things. Um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, so there's a certain wanting to have and hold, but um, there's a vision here, and it's a creative vision of some change that you'd like to make that you are uniquely able to see as possible. So there's a little bit, I think, that Uranian quality that's been coming through that you see an unexpected niche. You see something, you see something special that you wouldn't have thought of before and now you do think of it. Fortuna Minor in the heart. Um, this sort of represents that in order to achieve this, you may need some help from other people. So it could be the case that, for example, one of the things I thought of earlier, let's say you have a vision for a new home and you've been actually preparing for it. You're well prepared for it, 
but you need a little bit of help to get it accomplished. So it could be help moving. Uh, maybe you can get into the house, but then, you know, your family might need to help you with a little furniture, things like that. And to be honest, you're in a state of accomplishment that you're a little bit nervous that if you take help from other people, um, you may be beholden to them. What is it going to oblige you to do if to follow this vision of yours, you take help from other people? Is that going to put you in a restricted situation later? Um, are you going to find if you move forward that you can't get out of it? So this is Leo, the stroke of luck. So you may need help from other people or the situation, this niche that you identify may be coming because of a temporary situation involving other people. So a situation at work that could have come up because someone's on maternity leave, or there are changes of some type at the office, or there's some other change that someone else has made, some moving part that has to do with other people, and this has helped you see your chance. Um, I want to be clear, these are not cards of conquest, but they are cards of expansion. So whatever you're trying to do, you're trying to grow it. You're trying to grow it in a really exciting way. And you're also probably trying to grow it with the thought of leaving a legacy for the future. There is a sense that whatever you're trying to grow isn't just for you, but because you see this unique opportunity, when you blaze this trail, the trail will then become open for other people to follow you. So that's part of what I see here. So here in the belly, there is a sense of fear that you may compromise some of what you've earned, that you might be limiting yourself, or that you may be uh, committing in a way that you can't get back from. But still, look at all these stable cards, stable, stable, stable. There's so much strength here that I think that is only a deep-seated fear. I don't think you're going to accept that as the reality. Here, Acquisitio, this is Sagittarian. So this is moving, right? It's philosophical. It's idealistic. It's optimistic. It loves to travel. So the niche that you identified could also do with Sagittarian aspects like learning, uh, the law, medicine, foreign travel. Again, this idea of expanding your capacities. So it could be you have something you've been doing for a long time and become the acknowledged master of, and now you want to branch into a new area. And you're worried that people around you may not have as much confidence in your change as you do. And chances are right away, they may not. You may be dealing with people that while they're willing to let you go ahead with it, their conviction is not quite as strong as yours is. And that mean, may mean that you need to go it alone at first. You're in such a strong position and your vision is so clear that I think it would be a shame if you didn't give yourself the chance. And the other thing I'll say is when I looked at the bottom of my little deck, what I got was this card, Via. Via is the moon in Cancer, and Via, this little lightning bolt, uh, can be like a lonely river, but it, it also is the card or the glyph with the most movement. What this tells me at the bottom of the deck is you're going for it. There's something unique. It's a unique opportunity. Not everybody can see it, and uh, people may have a little bit half-hearted support for you now, you will prove out. And the reason you're doing it, which is wonderful, is not because you have to prove it to people. It's not because you're hungry to fill some lack within yourself. It's not out of any other reason than this pure creative joy that says, I can do it. I would love to do it. I'm going to do it. Like blooming like a flower just because you can not because um, you're trying to address some other issue. So I think it's a very exciting time. Let me know what your plans are and how you like the geomancy and rock on with your bad selves.